you ought to be happy where you are working. And I always worry about people who say, you know, I'm, I'm going to do this for 10 years. I really don't like it very well. And then I'll do 10 more years of this. And rest. I mean, that's a little like saving up sex for your old age. I mean, <laughs> not, not, not a very good idea. Warren Buffett and Bill Gates are two of the most accomplished business people in their respective fields. They have a huge uh, wealth of knowledge and a lot of insights that we can learn from. Welcome to this video where we'll be dive into some of Warren's and uh, Bill's lessons on what success really means and how you can achieve it. I started Microsoft, I didn't think of it as all that risky. You've always got a job with me, Bill. <laughs> uh, and the only, the thing that was scary to me wasn't quitting and starting the company. It was when I started hiring my friends and they expected to be paid. Uh, I thought I ought to uh, start this off by announcing that Bill and I uh, have a small bet as to who would get the, mo the most applause. And, uh, <laughs> I suggested that I bet my house against his, but, <laughs> uh, but we settled on a small sum, but evidently it isn't so small to Bill because, because just before we came out, he gave me this Nebraska Cornhusker shirt to wear, and he puts on this purple shirt. <laughs> we're, going to, uh, we're going to answer your questions. Whatever you want to talk about is, is fine, and we, uh, we don't want any softballs, and I, I thought by wearing this Cornhusker shirt that I could guarantee hardballs right in my head. Uh, uh, <laughs> when we went to the game last year, about halfway through the first quarter, Bill said, what's that big N stand for on those guys of yours? I said, Bill, I said, what the hell? I said, it's knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Start off with talking about uh, s sort of what got us here. And uh, uh, it's pretty simple in my case. It, it's, it's not IQ. I'm sure you'll all be glad to hear that. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> but er everybody in this room has more IQ than they need to do my job. The, the, uh, the big thing is rationality. And, and there was, you know, I always look at IQ and, and talent as sort of representing the, uh, the horsepower of the motor. But then in terms of the output, the efficiency with which the motor works, that depends on rationality because a lot of people start out with 400 horsepower motors and get 100 horsepower of output and it's way better to have a 200 horsepower motor and get it all into output and, and so why do, why do smart people do things that interfere with really getting the, the, the output they're entitled to and it's, uh, it, it gets into it, the habits and the character and the temperament and it really gets into behaving in a rational manner it's, and not, letting, not getting in your own way. As I say, everybody here has the ability uh, absolutely to do anything I do and, and much beyond. And, and some of you will and, and some of you won't. But it, 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 it will, the ones that won't, it will because, be because uh, uh, you get in your own way. It won't be because the, the world doesn't allow you to. It'll, it will be because you don't uh, allow yourself to. So I have one little suggestion for you. Pick out the person in the class that you admire the most and then write down why you admire them. Put down a list of qualities. Uh, you're not to name yourself in this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, and then put down the, the one uh, uh, that, frankly, you could stand the least in the whole group. And put, the, put down the qualities that, uh, that uh, uh, turn you off in that person. And look at that list, and, and you won't find it's a bunch of things like throwing a football 70 yards or, you know, or anything of the sort. The qualities of the first one that you admire are qualities that... that uh, you, with a little practice, uh, can make your own, and which, if practiced, will become habit forming. The chains of habit are too light to be felt until they're too heavy to be broken. I mean, my age, I can't change any of my habits. I mean, I'm stuck. But at your age, you know, you will have the habits 20 years from now that you decide to put into practice uh, today. So I just suggest that, that you, you look at the habits you admire in others, or the behavior you admire in others, and, and make those your own. Uh, habits, and you look at, at what you really find uh, uh, somewhat reprehensible in others, and just decide, you know, that those are things you're not going to do. Ben Franklin did that a few hundred years ago, and it still works today. And if, if you do that, uh, you'll find that uh, you convert all your horsepower into output. So. I was wondering how you define success personally. Well, I, 
I can certainly define happiness because that's what that's what I am. I mean, I, I and, and if that if that. <laughs> I mean, I get to do what I like to do every single day of the year, and I get to do it with people I like, and I get to, I get to, I don't have to associate with anybody causes my stomach to churn. At, uh, uh, and uh, the only thing in my job I don't like, and this only happens about every three or four years, occasionally I have to fire somebody, and I don't like, that's the only thing. Other than, I, I tap dance to work, and I get down there, and I think I'm supposed to lie on my back and paint the ceiling, you know, or something like my <laughs> so, I mean, it, that's the way I feel. And I, and, and it, 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 it doesn't diminish. It, it's, it's tremendous fun. So, uh, you know, if uh, uh, they say that uh, uh, success is uh, 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 getting what you want and happiness is wanting what you get, well, I don't know which one uh, applies in this case, but I, I do know that I, I wouldn't be doing anything else. I mean, it, uh, uh, I do advise you, you know, in, when you go out to work, go to, go to work for an organization that you admire people you admire because it'll, it'll, it'll turn you on and, and, and uh, uh, you ought to be happy where you are working and I always worry about people who say, you know, I'm, I'm going to do this for 10 years, I really don't like it very well, and I'll do 10 more years of this and rest. I mean, that's a little like saving up sex for your old age, I mean, <laughs> not, not, a, not a very good idea. <laughs> So get right in. Get, recommend that. Get right, get right into. Get right into what you enjoy, you know, and and uh, and you'll be successful at it. You really will. I mean, you won't be able to miss. And uh, um, you know, that's. Uh, uh, I don't regard what I do as the most important thing in the world at all. But it's right for me. I mean, I happen to be wired in a certain way that what I do works in this. If I had to do what. You know, Bill does. I mean, <laughs> it lasts about 10 minutes. And uh, uh, that's true of a lot of things. But I, luckily, I kind of stumbled into the thing that I, I, I do best. And, and that, you know, that, it's worked out well. Bill? Well, I think that the key point there is you've got to enjoy what you do every day. And for me, that's working with very smart people. It's working on new problems. You know, every time we think, hey, we've had a little bit of success, we're pretty careful not to dwell on it too much because <laughs> the bar gets raised. People's expectations of the, the products, we've always got customer feedback telling us the machines are too complicated, they're not, they're not natural enough. And the, the competition, uh, the, the, the breakthroughs, the research make uh, the field I'm, I'm in, I think, the most exciting field there is. There's some other good fields. Biotechnology is a good field because it's uh, changing the world of, of medicine and, and health. But the computer industry, in, in particular software, you know, I, I think uh, is the most exciting, and I think I have the, the best job in that, in that business. Don't you think Dairy, Dairy Queen is more important to the country? <laughs> you can manage Dairy Queen. Yeah. I, I'll go and buy the dilly bars. Yeah, yeah well, I've got to got it. <laughs> we'll raise the price when you come. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You don't, want to, you don't want to get in. I, I, I have turned down business deals that were otherwise decent deals because I didn't like the people that I would have to work with. I, I didn't see any sense pretending it. And, and to take on, to get involved with people that really cause your stomach to churn. I, you know, I, I say it's a lot like marrying for money, that it's, it's probably a bad idea under any circumstances, but it's absolutely crazy if you're already rich, right? <laughs> <laughs> Both of you are innovators in your given industry. I was wondering what your definition of innovation is. Well, I don't, I don't do a lot of innovating in, in, in what I do. I mean, I, I, my job, I really have just two functions in my job. One, one is to allocate capital, which I enjoy doing. And, uh, <laughs> and the second one is to have a group of managers, uh, to keep a group of people, 15 or 20 managers, uh, enthused about what they do when they have no financial need to do it whatsoever. Three, at least three quarters of the managers we have uh, are rich beyond any possible financial need. And, and therefore, my job is to figure out how to cause them to want to jump out of bed at six in the morning and, and, and work with all of the enthusiasm they did when they, when they were poor and starting. And, and if I do those two things, they do the innovation. Growing up, who were your biggest role models and what kind of a role did they play in your success? You know, I had uh, great parents, uh, both of whom were involved in uh, lots of interesting activities and would come home and talk to us about 
you know, the world of, of business or law or politics or the charitable activities they were involved in. And so that made us, uh, my, myself, my sisters always thought about, well, what are we going to do out there? And, uh, they had us as avid readers, and so we uh, had pretty broad interest in reading. Uh, scientists were a group that I gravitated to because this notion that just, you know, out of their heads they came up with neat ideas, uh, that sort of fascinated me. So quite a, quite a bit of the time I thought I'd be a mathematician or a scientist. It was only when I got to Harvard that I started to think of this uh, sort of all-absorbing hobby I'd had, computer stuff, which I just thought, okay, I've got to get rid of this and decide to do something serious. I started to realize, you know, this is pretty serious. <laughs> and it's actually more interesting and more impactful than uh, you know, going and, and trying to come up with a new theory in math or, or anything else. And so I, I had that dilemma for a couple of years, but eventually decided that uh, uh, computer really was a great, a great thing to be involved with. Yeah, I think you're 100% on the money in, in focusing. I, I would, instead of calling them role models, I call them heroes, actually. And, and, I, and I think if you tell me who your heroes are, I can tell you how you're going to turn out to quite an extent uh, by this point in life. And, and I, I, I have been extraordinarily lucky in that none of my heroes ever let me down. I mean, I, the ones I uh, came up with uh, throughout their lives, uh, I've never felt that I've been let down in any way with it. Number one was my dad, and, and uh, uh, had a huge impression on me. Uh, my wife, who was here, is, is one of my heroes. I mean, she is, uh, you know, in, in terms of, of uh, she's taught me a tremendous amount, and, and, and uh, never seen anybody any better with human beings than, than, than she is. And uh, uh, you can, you know, Yogi Berra again said you can you can observe a lot just by watching, and uh, <laughs> I, uh, you know, I, I watched my dad, and I, I've watched her, and. Uh, I had a, a professor, Ben Graham, uh, back at Columbia and had a huge impact on me. So I have been lucky in that I've had terrific heroes and they, they haven't let me down. And, and uh, uh, that, that takes you a long, long way. I, I've gone through one or two periods where it, it, we're kind of tough in life, but uh, not any, I mean, every, everybody's had, had that. But, but having the right heroes will take you right through it. Being a new company is very risky. How do you determine when is the best opportunity to start a new company, and how can you get people to support you? Well, it, when I started Microsoft, I didn't think of it as all that risky. I mean, I was so excited about what we were doing. It's true I could have gone bankrupt, uh, but you know, I had a set of skills that were highly employable, and in fact, my parents were still willing to let me go back to Harvard and finish my education if I wanted to. You've always got a job with me, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the only, the thing that was scary to me wasn't quitting and starting the company. It was when I started hiring my friends and they expected to be paid. Uh, <laughs> and, and then we had customers who went bankrupt, customers that I counted on to come through. And so then I, I got this incredibly conservative approach that I wanted to have enough money in the bank to pay a year's worth of payroll, uh, even if we didn't get any, any payments coming in. And you know, I'm almost uh, <laughs> true to that the whole time. We have about $10 billion now, which is, is pretty much enough yeah. for the next year. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, you know, I, if you're going to start a company, it takes so much energy that you, know, you it better overcome your, your feeling of risk. I don't think that you necessarily, if you're going to start a company, should do it at the start of your career. I think there's a lot to be said for working for a company, learning how they do things. You know, if you're young, it's hard to go lease premises. They, they made that hard for me. You couldn't rent a car uh, when you were uh, uh, under 25 at the time, so I was always taking taxis to go see customers. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the people, would, you know, people would say, well, we're going to go have a discussion in the bar. Well, I couldn't go to the bar. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, but you know, that's fun because I'll tell you, when people are first skeptical and they go, oh, this kid doesn't know anything, then when you show them you've really got a good product and you know something, they actually tend to go overboard and they think, whoa, you know, they know a lot. Uh, let's really do an incredible amount with these people. So our youth, at least in this country, uh, was a, a huge asset for us once we reached a, a certain threshold. It is hard, it's hard to hire old 
older people um, because they'll be a little bit conservative about whether they should come and, and take the risk. And it took three or four years before we could go out into the normal sort of employment pool. But those, those problems that come with starting the firm, you better think of those as, as part of the, the pleasure, part of the, the, the challenge that, that is part of the, the excitement. I was curious what each of you felt was the best business decision you'd made um, throughout your career. The best what? Business de decision. Uh, I think just getting in, jumping in the pool, basically. I mean, I, 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 I've always enjoyed what I've done, and, and, and a few things have worked out very well. And, and the nice thing about the investment business is that you don't need very many. But you'll, you'll see plenty of times when you get chances to do things that just shout at you. And the, the thing you have to do is, is when that happens, you have to take a big swing. I mean, there is, that is no time uh, to be reading a book on the theory of diversification. I mean, you know, I mean that is the time to put, you know, put very significant. When you find something that where you know the business, it's within your circle of competence, you understand it, the price is right, the people are right, then you, you know you, you take your, you take your thumb out of your mouth and you barrel in. <laughs> we were talking at breakfast this morning about uh, of all Warren's investments decisions, which was the worst decision. Which it, it's amazing that they're tough to find because he, uh, he's, you know, the track record's unbelievable. Uh, but we, I think, decided that by uh, some metric, the buying the company that he, his company is named after was probably the worst investment decision. Uh, That's true. It, I mean, we went into a terrible business because it was cheap. And it, it, it's what I refer to as the, the, the used cigar butt approach to investing. You know, that you see the cigar butt down there, it's soggy, you know, it's terrible. But there is one puff in it, and it's free. And, and, <laughs> And that's what Berkshire was when we bought it. I mean, it was selling below working capital. Actually, buying Berkshire Hathaway, buying control of it, was probably the biggest single bad decision that I've made. And then the, I've, I made all kinds of decisions that have cost us billions of dollars, but they've been, they've been <coughs> mistakes of omission rather than commission. I mean, there were businesses that we knew enough to buy a lot of. I don't worry about not buying Microsoft because I, I, I didn't understand that business. I didn't, didn't understand Intel. But there were businesses that I did understand. Fannie Mae was one. I mean, I made a decision to buy it, and I just I didn't execute. And we would have made many billions of dollars on something that was within my circle of competence, and I didn't do it. And you don't see that accounting, conventional accounting doesn't record that. But believe me, it happened. <laughs> in, in, in my case, I'd say my best business decisions really have to do with uh, picking people, you know, yeah. deciding to go into partnership with Paul Allen uh, is, is probably at the top of the list. And then uh, subsequently uh, hiring a friend, Steve Ballmer, and having somebody who you totally trust, who's totally committed, who shares your vision and yet has a, a little bit different set of skills and also acts as a check on you. You know, some of the ideas you come up with, you run by them because you know they're going to say, hey, wait a minute. Uh, uh, you know, have you thought about this and that? And just, you know, the, the benefit of sparking off of somebody who's, who's got that kind of brilliance, it's not only made it fun, but it's really led to a lot of success. So picking, picking a partner is, is crucial. Yeah, and I've had a partner like that, Charlie Munger, uh, for a lot of years. And, and it, it does for me exactly what, what, what Bill is talking about. Uh, Charlie, and so you have to calibrate with Charlie, though, because Charlie says everything I do is dumb. But, <laughs> <laughs> but if he says it's really dumb, then I know it is. But if he just says it's dumb, I take that as an affirmative vote. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, if you can change one thing in your life, what would it be and why? My age. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I never look back. I, I, I just don't, I don't worry about anything. I mean, I, uh, I uh, so I consider myself unbelievably lucky. So the idea of saying I could have even been a little luckier if this or that had happened, you know, I mean, you know, I could have been a lot better looking or I could have been a better athlete or all that stuff, but so what? You know, I, 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 you play the hand you get, you play it as well as you can, and, and you're thankful if you're lucky enough. The odds were, when I was born, the odds were over 50 to 1 against me being born in the United States. 
I mean, I had a 2% probability, you know. <laughs> well, if I'd known that, I might have given up and not come out, I mean. <laughs> but but, but it, here it was, you know, I was lucky enough to be born here, and I was lucky enough to have uh, two terrific parents, and they, uh, and, and they raised the, the, the three kids in a way that, that helped me enormously uh, in life. So, I mean, when you got all that going for I, I just don't think you look back and, and think about anything that could be changed better. I'm, I'm thankful. I'm, Isn't there at least one bridge hand you would have played differently? Well, that, uh, I have a partner who says I should have played every bridge hand differently. <laughs> I asked her one time, I said, how should I play that hand? And she said, under an assumed name. <laughs> I think the, the key resource you have to deal with is your time and how you spend time. And I'm pretty rigorous at looking back each year. I even get uh, my friend Steve Ballmer to come in and look at my schedule and criticize, hey, you, you didn't really need to spend time on this or that. And uh, That's pretty useful because you know, if I can get more time to sit down with the engineers, if I can get more time to get out with some customers. Those are the things I just love to do. And you know, it, it just gets me excited. It clears my mind. And and so, you know, I'm always trying to make sure that that uh, I'm only doing the things that are important.